<laughs> All right, welcome back to Sportsline right here on News Channel 5 Plus. We continue yet another evening with our guy Jonathan Hutton from Outkick 360 coming soon to 94.9 where you can listen to him the way it ought to be over the air on the Nashville airwaves. Jay Hutt, before we went to break, you mentioned uh, Derek Henry. Interesting offseason for him coming off his first major uh, yes. injury. Of course, he did make it back in time for the playoff game. Was somewhat effective, but not very effective, obviously. Listen, he's a big guy with a lower uh, leg injury. And of course, you know, the, we know the shelf life for running backs. Usually as you creep up towards 30, you start to, uh, the production starts to wane a little bit. How do you see his role, given what we know about the Titans wide receivers and, you know, the unknown about Traylon Burks, Robert Woods, obviously coming off major knee surgery. We like Nick Westbrook Aquina, but is this guy a game breaker? I tend to say no. Do you think all right. that, and then we, Austin Hooper obviously is a, is a good pass catching and blocking tight end, but we're not 100% sure how he fits in. Given all that, and Ryan Tannehill's struggles last year, by the way, do you think that uh, you'll see more of a workload for King Henry this season or less or about the same? What, what, uh, what say you? Look, I, uh, you laid it out perfectly there. I mean, they, they have a lot of ifs. They, they, I mean, they, they have some proven guys at times when all healthy and everything's working. Tannehill's a very good regular season quarterback. Um, you know, he, he helped them get to 12 wins despite all their injuries last season. But the, the run game is where this offense is built and will continue to run through. Um, John, I, I wonder, so there... Let me let me preface this by saying Derrick Henry is a team first player. Mm -hmm. There has never been any issues whatsoever with him behind the scenes. Um, in fact, even when he was franchise tagged, um, he worked uh, to come back and, and work out the the contract extension uh, long term on the four year fifty million dollar deal that he signed. He's now going into year three of that. I. You know, I looked out there earlier this week, and Danico Autry's not there. Jeffrey Simmons is not there. Harold Landry and, and Bud Dupree are not there. Nate Davis isn't there. Derrick Henry's not there. It's voluntary. Mm -hmm. But there is this assumption that everybody's coming back next week because of the mandatory minicamp. And I am extremely fascinated to see how Henry reacts whenever he's asked about the contract stuff for this reason. Um, I was, everyone knows the offensive situation, as you well do. You've seen this team practice. Robert Woods, you, Robert Woods coming off the injury, Traylon Burks, we just talked about. There, there are questions here. And even if you think they know exactly where the pieces are going to fall into place in the passing game, and Tannehill's going to be just as in rhythm in the regular season he's always been, the offensive line makes sense and molds together, I do think all of that takes time to come together throughout the month of September, first half of October. I think they're going to give this guy the ball as much as they ever have hmm. out of the shoot. Um, and really, his contract is set up to do that because he has, while he's going, he's scheduled to make a little over $12 million this, this season, he no longer has any guaranteed money remaining on his contract. Hmm. And I think that factors in from the business angle of this. I, I, if I'm representing him, and again, he's always done this behind the scenes. He's a very quiet guy. He rehabbed behind the scenes and no one saw him from his injury in October until the week he came back and was active on the roster. So again, I want to preface all this and stress this. I think there's a chance he doesn't show up on Tuesday. Hmm. And, uh, and when I say chance, now I don't know what percentage chance that is. But it's not 100% that he's showing up the same way I would tell you Harold Landry is showing up or Bud Dupree is showing up. Because at his position and with the leverage that he has, which is Derrick Henry is the most important player that's not there offensively that they've got to have. I would leverage that, especially in a mandatory minicamp where the team can waive the fine down the line if they want to. Now, they can't waive the forty thousand slash fifty thousand dollar a day fine in training camp, mm -hmm. but they can do that. It's not a mandatory fine in in these mini camp sessions. Uh, in reading about that last night, 
I, if I'm advising him, I would say, look, Derek, we need some guaranteed money here mm. because if you get hurt, your company, people are already writing him off, John. Right. People are already saying that he's going down and, and people have been predicting this for a while. And now that it's, he's coming off that injury and didn't perform well when he came back in the playoffs, they've been writing him off. If he gets hurt again, and last year I would have said if, you know, yeah, he's been extremely durable, but now he's coming off the injury. We're going to point, when I say we, everyone will collectively point to workload and uh, how, how much of a factor the first injury played in all this. Again, we don't, there are a lot of if, ands, and buts here. But without the guaranteed money and how much he means to this offense, I would, from a business perspective, I would say now's the time to play the hand when you have a little bit of leverage, you used it. A.J. Brown used it, he yeah. got paid. Derrick Henry needs some guaranteed money. I don't know if he needs a big contract extension, but I do not think there's a coincidence that Jeremy Fowler in early May had a random little blurb, and I don't think it was random, but it was underneath these wild, it was underneath a wild card extension possibilities. Right. Number one on that list was Derrick Henry, and the way it was worded was very specific. The Titans are open. As the team is open to a contract extension with Derrick Henry. And I think that's because they know there's no more guaranteed money on that contract. And they know if he doesn't show up, they are in a world of hurt. So <laughs> I, I am very, I, I am fascinated to find out if he shows up. If he does, that doesn't mean that he's happy with the contract that he has. If he finishes healthy, he's going to make over $12 million. It's great. But if he gets hurt, if, if for some reason something doesn't work out, that's back-to-back -back seasons where he doesn't either finish the season or he's nicked and bruised and banged up to the point where you're going to point to something as something to decrease his value down the road. And mm. where he is in the position he plays, he's got to cash in when he can. And he is, to my, in my opinion, at the position when healthy, he, is the, he, is, he remains the baddest man in the NFL. Jonathan Taylor can stay number two as far as I'm concerned. Right. Because I would sign up Derrick Henry, and I would use the leverage if I were him personally. But, again, uh, he's, he's always done things behind closed doors, and he's always been there and worked things out, even though he's been on the practice field for the mandatory training camp sessions or whatever it might have been. So I don't know how it plays out. But I don't, I don't automatically assume he's here on Tuesday. Wow. That is interesting food for thought right there. Didn't realize – uh, a, this is already year three of his four-year deal, and B, he has no more guaranteed money left. You're right. His value to the team may be at an all-time high, given everything we talked about with the question marks on offense. Something to definitely hey, keep an eye on next week. Just, and again, I'm not trying to uh, air the uh, be on the lookout alert. You, sure. know, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not oh, trying yeah. to raise uh, the yellow flag here on the beach or whatever, the red flag. Right. But, but, um, I just think it's it, the, from the business perspective of this, this would be the time to, to play that card. Um, and, and Aaron Donald, you know, they, the, the Rams, it, it, was roared, it was worded as a restructure, not an extension, because they didn't add any, any additional years onto his contract. Mm -hmm. They just gave him a raise. I was going to say, he basically got a raise, right, Jonathan? Yeah, they mm -hmm. gave him a raise to show up, mm -hmm. right, and play and not retire. And then incentives not to retire a year from now. Um, now, the, the incentives wouldn't be the same for, for Henry not to retire, but the incentives would be, hey, we here's some additional guarantees that get us to the next stage of negotiations, whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. There's going to be something behind the scenes that works out there. Wow. Yeah, that is uh, certainly something to keep an eye on. What about Taylor Lewan? What? Uh, a lot of people thought that maybe, perhaps, he he's might a be a June 1st casualty. Uh, he's obviously here. He showed up to, uh, to uh, OTAs, which I think is smart on his part. Uh, what do we know about his contract status and his immediate and long-term future here in Tennessee? Well, he, he means a great deal to this team right now. We talked about this last Sunday um, because I, I, still call, I still refer to Taylor as a linchpin of this offense mm -hmm. uh, when available. Uh, but over the last couple of seasons, he has not been available nearly enough. And and that's step number one is availability. Because when he's healthy and when he is dialed in, he is a huge asset to the offense. 
the contract moving forward and Taylor speaking of the guaranteed money Taylor has referenced this he's extremely honest um, he has referenced that past this year there are there's no more guaranteed money on his contract so it's easy to move on from the contract if you're the Titans it, it's um, it, it's interesting to see how things play I don't write it off that he's he's not here long term under a restructure or, or, or something moving forward that's going to help out against the cap and and I, I don't think they're gonna uh, expect him not to be here after this year but he's got to prove number one stay healthy which uh, in, in some cases is completely out of his control the ACL is the ACL mm-hmm. but now I, a year removed after coming back from the ACL he's got to be on point he knows this and he's got to be available when he's healthy you know he can't get the four game suspension which he has owned up to he, he knows that but he's got he's got to be I mean they paid him for a reason um, they paid him to play left tackle and to be among the best in the NFL that's what he's he's got to play like um, and honestly John I would put him among the best overall athletes on the entire team mm-hmm. when he's healthy he's amazing I mean it was speed lateral ability for his sheer size and, and stature uh, when you compare pound for pound athleticism he's up there. Um, if you if you haven't watched him do some things compared to some other big men in this league, it's pretty incredible what Taylor Lewan can do. He's he, he has the traits that you draft in any draft at the position, but he's he's got to be that true <coughs> locked in left tackle this right. year because if he goes down, they've played the musical chairs, and I, I know I. I I even as I'm saying this, I I realize I have said this in years past where the musical chairs are not ideal and it's really hard to overcome. The Titans have done an exceptional job of playing those musical chairs and making things work on the offensive line. But this year, I mean, given the fact that Dylan Radins isn't even worthy of being handed a position title <laughs> and and they have a rookie right tackle, it's not a great year for a left tackle and Taylor Lewan not to be available. So, you know, that it's they they need him, John. That that's why he's on this roster. That's why he's not a June first casualty. They right. desperately need him to live up to expectations. Well, I'm glad you mentioned before we go to break. I'm glad you mentioned the battle at right tackle. Looks like it'll be Dylan Ray, uh, Radins v Nicholas Petit Freer, who they drafted. They moved up yep. in the second round to get Radins last year, but you mentioned it. They they kind of made reference during the offseason. He may not be ready for prime time. Petit Freer, we talked to him last week. He seems like a really intelligent guy and a guy that is picking things up pretty well. I mean, it's way too early. The pads haven't come on yet. They haven't reported for training camp. But who do you think has the early edge in that RT battle? Personally, I, I think it's Petit Ferrer. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, and so I'll, I'll, I'll try to set this up, and I'm watching the clock here a bit. Um, so Dylan Radins was drafted in 2021. In 2020, North Dakota State played one game right. because of COVID. And coming out of the small school, drafting the second round, this time of year, last year, he was, coaches were raving about him. They were moving him around some. When I say raving, like they were talking, oh, man, this guy's really picking up on coaching. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, camp rolled around. They had a joint practice with the Falcons, or was it the Bucks? I can't remember. I think it was the Falcons. And, and maybe not. It was one of those teams. And, um, we didn't hear much more about Dylan Radins. In fact, he was more likely inactive than he was active. Now, to his credit, he stepped in and started at left tackle, found out on game day morning, on Thursday morning of a Thursday night football game against the 49ers, and did okay yep. against Nick Bosa, who the 49ers lined up opposite him from the jump. I think you and I were watching that game together. And uh, so I, I do want to give him benefit of the doubt because of that performance. But let's contrast this with Petit Frere, who played in every game last season and is a veteran of college football in a power five and I think comes in with a bit more of a step forward at this time of year than than Dylan Radins did. But we were also saying that about Dylan Radins this time last year. So Keep this in mind. The pads are going to come on in training camp, but where we will really find out where this battle is locked in and who has the edge 
It's whenever they have the joint practices against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Arizona Cardinals. Mm -hmm. Back-to-back weeks in the preseason, weeks two and three of the preseason, that is where we find out if Nicholas petit Frere is is going to be the right tackle. Um, I don't think either one is an ideal situation, but because you don't want to start a rookie in the offensive line and right. But but they drafted him when they did because they needed him, and right now I give the benefit to him simply because we have had this well ten to nine to ten month saga of Dylan Raiden's not either either not being talked about or when talked about they won't tell us if they feel like he's playing right tackle or right guard or anything <laughs> i mean we 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 know ben jones is playing center right we 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 know that taylor's playing left tackle we know that nicholas petit frere is a tackle but they won't say that about dylan radins which tells me nicholas petit, petit frere has the best opportunity to to lock in this job but we won't know until he faces the vets and padded practices uh later this summer i i can't wait for those those yeah. are here in nashville yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun uh to see how that battle plays out all right time for another break we come back hudden we're gonna talk about uh the, what's going on in professional golf and it's a big summer for professional wrestling here in Nashville. Got a lot of good stuff coming up. Jay Hutt's a big wrestling fan, as am I. We'll get to all that next year on Sportsline.